Hey guys, welcome to our fighting vehicle series. I'm Johan, up there, that's Sean. Today, we're gonna to be talking about an American amphibious armored personnel carrier, the M113. The M113 was designed by the Americans in the early 1950s and has served from Vietnam all the way to the present day with countries obvious, such as obviously the Americans but also the Canadians and as far away as the Netherlands and Germany. So while we're up front let's just see what we've got here. The M113 is completely made out of aluminum. This is because it's an amphibious vehicle and aluminum helps it float on water. You'll note that the frontal armor is sloped from the horizontal at a 60 degree angle. And over here we've got a screen. Underneath this screen we've got a hatch where we can access the engine bay which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Now over up here we've got two sets of lights, or rather a set of lights on both sides. So on the outside this light over here is a normal headlight. But this light over here with a black cover is an infrared spectrum light. This means that in night operating conditions, if the driver or the crew commander is wearing a pair of night vision goggles, they can turn on these lights and see much, much better in the dark. Now, if you want to come over here and look at the side of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle is pretty simple. This vehicle is probably the best metal box on tracks in the world. On the side, it's just completely flat. And we've got the tracks over here. So we've got the front drive sprocket up front and then five road wheels along the back and the idler wheel at the very back. Okay, now let's climb up on top and see what's on the roof. To climb up, simply step on the, step on the front drive sprocket and then you've got these footholds over here. Okay, so now we're up here at the top of the M113. And as you can see, it's really a simple vehicle in all, is, in all respects. The roof is completely flat. And over here, I've got the crew commander's hatch. Over there to the front left side of the vehicle is the driver's hatch. And over here is actually the roof hatch for the crew compartment. Now, right beside the roof hatch, we've got antenna mounts on both sides of the vehicle for the radios inside. And then directly to my right, we've got the ventilation, we've got the, or rather, we've got the ventilation grills for the engine. The M113 is powered by a Detroit diesel, diesel engine. And unfortunately, we can't actually show you that because to open up the engine bay of the vehicle would require us to basically lift up the entire front hull of the vehicle. With that said, let's go talk about the driver's position. Okay, so now we're in the driver's position. The driver has a 360 degree field of view when he's unbuttoned as I am right now, meaning he's exposed to everything around him, but he can button up in combat conditions. Okay, now we're in the buttoned up position for the driver, and we can probably say that the driver controls most of the fun stuff in this vehicle. But first of all, let's talk about what the driver can do when he's buttoned up. So in order to drive properly, the driver has four periscopes all around in front of him to look out from when he's underneath the armor. Now with that said, let's talk about what the driver can control. On the far left side of the vehicle, we've got the heater control up here. We've got a volume and speaker control for the radio over here. And then continuing on over here, we've got most of the vehicle controls. So we've got the speedometer, engine temperature, everything else, just like all your other vehicles. But we've also got the electrical system controls. So for stuff like the IR lights or the bilge pumps, for example. Down here, we do have the master, elect ele the master electrical switch. And then continuing forward over to here, we've got these two levers over here, which control the transmission. So what these do is they control the amount of power going into each track. So this one controls the left track, this one controls the right track. So then, say you want to go faster or slower, well, you just apply power evenly across both tracks. But if you want to, to turn left, for example, 
you'd apply more power to the right track and slow down the left track to pivot the, the vehicle around to the left and vice versa for the right side. Now continuing to the top, we've got a row of indicator lights up here as well as the switch for the horn. And then farther down here, we've got the gas pedal down there in the wheel, in the foot well. And then to its right, we've got these controls for the throttle and the choke of the engine. Now on the right panel of the driver's compartment, we've got the gear shifter and all around here, oh, as well, we've got the, the lever which controls the ramp over here. But festooned all around this right panel, we've got all these stickers with maintenance procedures and other procedures for driving the vehicle. So changing gears, ramp operation, etc., etc. Also to my right, Underneath these panels is the engine. So Sean, why don't you come over here and we'll pop open these panels. Right. Okay, so to open up these panels, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is just loosen up these screws and then, so, and then you can pop it open after getting all of these. Okay, now that we've got the engine exposed, let's go talk about the engine. Underneath these panels lies a 6V53 engine manufactured by the GM Diesel Division, later known as Detroit Diesel. This six-cylinder diesel-fueled and water-cooled engine is capable of producing 212 brake horsepower. With a power to weight ratio of around 19 horsepower per ton, the M113 is able to reach a maximum speed of about 61 km per hour on the road. And, as you can see, with its tracks and torsion bar suspension on each road wheel, the M113 performs well on uneven terrain. The mechanics for the M113 are just like the vehicle itself, simple and with no frills. With that said, it's time to talk about the rest of the vehicle. Okay, now that we're done talking about the engine, Sean, why don't you tell us about the rest of this vehicle? Brilliant. Right. Well, I'm going to take you up into the commander's hatch, and to do that, we first need to raise the seat up to here and lower the actual, this actual part here. So to do that, we're going to pull in this lever and Take it all the way up to here, where you release it and lock it in. Then we pull down, then we pull down a little lever over here, and that brings the seat way down there, and we lock it in there. So if you follow me up, here we're in the commander's position. We've got the mounting for the 12.7 millimeter machine gun in my front, and the commander's hatch cover to my rear. To rotate the turret, there's a small locking handle down here to my right that we're going to lower down. Then the turret has 360 degree rotation. All the way around. So that's about all there is up here, but uh, there's quite a bit more to talk about down in the vehicle itself. So if you'll come with me. We're going to close this seat again and bring it down. So we're going to raise it all up till it locks, then pull in this lever again to bring it down, all the way to the bottom. So here in the vehicle itself, we've got a radio, which, uh, which is over there, and we've got seating for the crew of two and 11, and 11 passengers, one there, 10 in, the seat, 10 in the aisle seats. The seats can also be raised to allow more room for equipment or other supplies. And we've, we've got a roof hatch to gain situational awareness 
as well as to allow troops to fire while the vehicle while inside the vehicle. Over here, we've got the fuel tank. Now this is the A2 model. And if you're having a fuel tank inside a vehicle isn't the greatest of ideas when it's in the crew compartment because any, anything messy comes up and something happens to that fuel tank, any number of very, very bad things can happen to the crew and passengers inside. This is the man door of the M113. To open it, you've got to take this lever here and really give it a good heave. And that opens it right up past this, uh, past this little notch here. This is the combat lock. When it's in place, the, the uh, opposite handle of this on the outside of the door can't be opened. Uh, so that, keep, that keeps it closed in dangerous situations. Now, give this a good heave. And open this. However, there is another way to get out of the M113, which I'll now demonstrate. The powered ramp is the main method of disembarking mounted troops inside the M113. It should be noted, however, that to raise the ramp, you do need to turn the vehicle on. Anyways, back to you, Sean. Why don't you talk about the rear of the vehicle? So, here at the back of the A2, we've got a locking latch that the door opens right into that to close, you have to pull the locking latch and then push the door into position. Now, back here, we've got positions both here and over there for jerry cans full of any given liquid, water, fuel, you name it. On the A3 version, the, the fuel tanks were actually there, fixing the problems that might arise with the, with the fu indoor fuel can. We've also got recovery points for the vehicle, as well as a tow attachment. With its simple but reliable features, good performance, and lengthy service record, the M113 is definitely the world's best middle box on tracks and will surely serve for more decades to come. Okay guys, that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, just go ahead and hit that button or subscribe. If you have something to say or something you didn't like, leave us a comment. It's time to close up now. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the roof hatch here. Ugh. So I'll pull up this latch. And give the hatch a nice close. All right. Well, now it's really over. It's time for us to, to close up. See you later. See you guys.